Hi, my name is Paul, this is Twin Sauce, and today we're talking about manual settings on your camera. Now, this might be intimidating, and it might be scary, and you might be frustrated, and this might be the 50th video you've watched about it, and I'm just hoping that it makes some sense to you, because I know that it's tricky at the beginning. The more you play with it, the more you practice, the easier it will be. So what I'm doing in this video is I'm gonna pause it throughout or have you pause and grab your camera and actually practice because it's the only way that you're actually gonna be able to figure it out, if that makes sense. So grab your camera, a sibling or a plant that you can take a picture of and get ready to practice these different elements. We're gonna break this video into two parts. The first part is about exposure. Your exposure is what the shutter speed, aperture, and ISO do together to create how bright or how dark your image is, okay? So each one of those things have different elements that make it brighter or darker, and they all work together to create the exposure of your image. Each one of those things also has a creative element to it or a consequence that goes along with them that we're gonna talk about in the second half of this video, okay? But first, let's talk about brightness and darkness of your image or your exposure. First of all, let's talk about your shutter speed. Now, shutter speed is referred to in these fractions one over 20, one over 200, one over 2000, etc. It can be any number within those. And your camera basically is just telling you how fast it's opening and closing or how long it actually stays open for. So one 200th of a second is actually opening and closing at one 200th of a second. So this picture was taken at one 100th of a second, whereas this picture was taken at one 1,000th of a second. That one one thousandth of a second is very fast and lets only a little bit of light in as opposed to the one one hundredth of a second which lets a lot more light in. That's shutter speed. It's just the amount of time that that shutter's opening to let some light in before it closes again. Next, we're gonna talk about aperture. Now your aperture is just the hole on the inside of the lens that opens to let more light in or closes to let less light in. So what that means is that the bigger that that hole is on the inside or the lower the number is, the brighter your picture's gonna be Whereas if it's smaller or a bigger number, it's going to be darker. So on your camera, it's gonna look like this. So this picture is at f1.8, which not all lenses can do. So if your lens can't do this, that's okay. Just go as low as you can. It's gonna be brighter, okay? So it means the hole on the inside of that lens is very big. So f1.8 f1 in this image, as opposed to f5.6, which is a smaller aperture, letting less light in. All right, so now we know how shutter speed works and how an aperture works for letting more light in or less light in. Now let's talk about the ISO. The ISO is actually the sensor on the inside of the camera that the light is being let into. okay? It's what makes the image. Now that image can be more or less sensitive to light depending on how we set it. The lower the number on that scale, the darker or the less sensitive to light it is, the bigger the number, the more sensitive to light or the brighter it's gonna be. So in this image, it's at 100 ISO, meaning it's actually not very sensitive to light at all. It's the lowest the camera can go. Now this one is at ISO 1000, meaning it's very sensitive to light in comparison to the ISO 100, which is a lot less sensitive to light. Now that's the shutter speed, aperture, and ISO, and all three of those things work together to create an exposure. Let's go over them all one more time really quick. This picture has a shutter speed of one one hundredth of a second, which is brighter and letting more light in than this image at one one thousandth of a second, which is faster, letting less light in. This aperture at f 1.8 is big and letting a lot of light in, whereas this one is smaller at f 5.6, letting less light in, making it darker. In this photo, we're looking at ISO 100, which is not very sensitive to light at all, as opposed to this image at ISO 1000, which is very sensitive to light. Alrighty, so that is the first half of this video, okay? It's just talking about exposure, how much light is being let into the camera. So if you think about it like this, your aperture is at the front, it's the first line of defense to light, it opens just big enough to let just enough light in that your shutter speed opens for just the right amount of time to hit your sensor that is just sensitive enough that it all works together to create a good image. Make sense? I hope so. If it still doesn't make sense, here are all the images that I took with all of my settings. So hopefully those can be helpful guides for you getting started to take your pictures. Then once you get there, I want you to move them around so that you can create other exposures, the same exposure, but with other settings. Does that make sense? So use different kinds of settings to make the same exposure. Have fun with it. I'm gonna pause the video now. You guys can, uh, you know, figure it out and uh, I'll be here waiting for you when you're done. Good luck. My light keeps changing in my room. Uh. How'd it go? 
I hope it went well. I hope that you're not pulling your hair out and uh, frustrated as I was when I was learning. If you're not, that's great, cool. If you are, completely understandable. It may not make any sense at all. That's okay, keep playing with it, keep working with it. If you need to watch that video again, the first part of the video again, do it. The second part of the video is just more on the creative elements of each one. They each have a consequence. And sometimes that consequence is good and sometimes it's not so good. Starting with our shutter speed, the consequence is motion blur. So the slower that you have your shutter speed set to, the blurrier the movement in your image will be. So the, the slower that is, it means the more time is it, that that shutter is open for allows time for motion blur. So the faster that it is, obviously the less blur that you'll have because it's less time that it's open. So for example, in these images here, I've got an image of me jumping. At 1 20th of a second, it's very blurry. It wasn't sharp, it wasn't sharp at all. Whereas at 1 200th of a second, that movement is a lot crisper and sharper than at 1 20th of a second because less time elapsed. The, the faster the shutter speed, the sharper it's going to be, the slower, the more blurry you, you, blur you can achieve through movement. Now that can be intentional. So if you go really slow, like eight seconds, having your shutter open for eight seconds, you can get a picture like this, which is me and my roommate writing our first initials of our names um, with cell phone lights for eight seconds. And you just like this. That's what I did. And then it made this. And uh, that's super fun. That's shutter speed. Moving on to your aperture. Now, aperture deals with blur in a different way. It's your focus blur. Now, with a bigger aperture, the bigger that that hole is, the, the lower that the number is, the more blur you will have in your background. Whereas the smaller that, that hole is, or the bigger the number on your aperture, the less light's being let through, but it also means that less is going to be out of focus, right? So you have more depth of field. More is gonna be in focus, whereas less is gonna be in focus at the, at the bigger aperture, lower number. Here's a stuffed animal. Everything around the stuffed animal at 1.8 aperture is out of focus. The light bulb to, that's right next to him, the windowsill, the buildings in the background out the window, all of that's out of focus except the animal, the stuffed animal himself. Whereas in this one at F9, much more is in focus. That light next to him is in focus, the windowsill's in focus, the dirty window's in focus, but the buildings are less out of focus. So more is gonna be in focus that the smaller that aperture is or the bigger the number, Whereas the bigger that aperture is, the lower the number, less is gonna be in focus. All right, now let's move on to ISO. Now ISO is the only one that really has a, a consequence that isn't a good consequence. It's actually a bad one. And that's because when you increase your ISO sensitivity or the image sensitivity too high, you'll get noise or grain on your image and it will look bad, depending on how much grain you have. And some grain, if you have a little bit, you can fix it in Photoshop or in your editing softwares, but for the most part, it doesn't look good. So here's two examples. Here's an ISO 100, which is the lowest that my camera can do. And there's like no grain, no noise in the shadows and the highlights, nothing. It's pretty clear image. Whereas you can see the grain in this next one. Look at those, the door, look at the wall, the highlights, the shadows. It's very grainy and noisy. And it looks like a really crappy camera took that picture. But a lot of cameras will do this because that's the only way, that sensitivity to light to get an image to be lit properly, they have to push those ISOs past their limits to a point where you get some really nasty grain. Alrighty, so let's recap real quick. Your shutter speed, the faster that it is or the bigger that that number is means less light is being let in, but it also means less time is elapsing, making it a clearer motion blur. There's less motion blur involved. Whereas the lower that that shutter speed is or the smaller the number means more time is elapsing means more lights being let in, but also that it has more capabilities of blurring your image or having motion blur. For your aperture, we've got big apertures, which let a lot of light in and also make your backgrounds more out of focus. The smaller that that aperture is, the less lights being let in or the darker it gets, but it also means that less things are gonna be out of focus. It means you have a bigger depth of focus. For your ISO, the lower that number is, the darker it's gonna be, but the clearer the image is going to be based on the grain that's being introduced. The bigger that number, the more grain is being introduced, and sometimes that can make that focus even a little bit fuzzy. I hope those things are helpful. I hope all of those things work together in your head to click to make an image that you are proud of and that you are excited about. Whenever you're excited, whenever you take a picture that like you're so stoked about and you're, it's like working and it's clicking, post it on Instagram, tag me in it. I'd love to be involved in that process with you. Anyway, I hope that that works. I hope that you have fun with your photography stuff. Go out there and create something. The only way to learn is by doing. Have fun, take pictures, live life. I'll see you in another one real soon.
Don't die. Okay, bye. Uh, uh. Uh.